part two of the Emily Awards. I'm your host, Tyler Sponge Tip. We've seen the face products, now it's time to move on to the eyes. And let me tell you, the official trainer of the Emily Awards is quite the taskmaster. She's been working these products hard to determine which will reign supreme. The results? Unprecedented. This year there are 15 first time winners. Now let's get the latest from Emily and Beauty Broadcast Headquarters. Hey everybody, welcome. I'm so excited for this part of the Emily Awards. I have so many brand new winners in the eyes segment of my awards. So we're going to talk about a lot of great products. High-end eye primer. It's crazy because I'm looking at my computer here and it looks like Too Faced Shadow Insurance has won for four straight years. But in the past year, I've noticed something and it's even been happening with um, shadow insurance tubes that I've gotten more recently. And I feel like they're more liquidy than they used to be. And I feel like they're also more prone to like separating and squeezing out like really really liquid and having that issue repeatedly I don't feel like I can name the product as a favorite anymore but I definitely do have a winner for drugstore and it's one that I've been very very happy with and it's the Milani eyeshadow primer and I know I've talked a lot about the elf one dollar eyeshadow primer that's a great one it's worked well for me um, I haven't heard as good of feedback from the masses on that one but this one I think is a, just maybe a little more advanced than that one in that I feel like it does um, neutralize discoloration on your lids a little bit better than the L. For high-end cream shadow, a longtime favorite is keeping the top spot. It is not only a matter of having beautiful colors, but having great staying power and the kind of uh, style of product that I really like. I love these Mally Evercolor Shadow Sticks. I love the way that they twist up. Um, you don't have to sharpen them. They're the, just the perfect size to get all over your lid really easily or also go under your eye with them. Champagne is a favorite shade. I just thought I'd show one here that I've really probably used the most. Um, but it makes a great base for your powder shadows, but don't feel like you have to put powder on top because they're super long wearing, just as is. Now something super exciting from the drugstore for cream shadows is the Avon Extra Lasting Eyeshadow Pencils. I say from the drugstore, but they're a drugstore price range. You can order from your Avon representative or you can order actually just from Avon. Avon's website, but these shadow sticks, you'll notice something familiar. Really similar format and size to Mally's, same staying power. Um, the shades that they do have are gorgeous, but there's not quite the um, extensive shade range that Mally's has, but still some really, really gorgeous colors. I love this color called Amethyst. It's like a taupe with a little bit of purple. For small palette, high end, one in particular stands out to me, and it is from Bare Minerals. It's the Ready Eyeshadow, and this quad is called The Happy Place, and I just love this color combination. I think part of what I enjoy so much about this is that it's kind of unexpected. Um, you know, I really wasn't thinking to combine peach and plum, you know, uh, just on my own. But after getting this quad and seeing how beautiful they look together, and I am wearing this one today, um, I've got some of the peach on my lid, this in the outer corner, smudged under my eye as and well. And you've got this very cool, like, matte taupe that works great for blending out the edges. Um, it takes some of these shimmery shades just kind of down a notch. I think it's beautiful. The texture of these shadows is amazing. I've been falling in love with them, like, starting toward the the end of last year and all through this year I've been enjoying these kinds of shadows so much. Tyler Sponge Tip back here with you for an Emily Awards game break. Apparently there's something out there called the happy place that people have been enjoying this year. The happy place, I assume, is some sort of bar where they sell fantastic frozen cocktails. Emily? For favorite small drugstore palette, it's just such a simple trio, but the quality of the shadows is outstanding and it can take you anywhere from a really natural daytime eye to a super dark and smoky eye and it's Wet n Wild Silent Treatment. This continues to be my favorite Wet n Wild trio. I just love the shades that are in here. You've got like a really soft peach, this beautiful um, like kind of silvery taupe, and then this wonderfully deep dark um, like brownish black. And it goes on with so much intensity like you actually need to make a point to use a light hand with that shadow if you don't want it to be like super, super rich. But I love um, just the range that this simple trio can create. So it continues to be a favorite of mine. All right, high-end large palette. If you only knew how many times I went back and forth 
on this category. It's nuts, but I did settle on two. One is a returning favorite, one is a new favorite. My returning favorite for high-end palette, this one last year as well, um, is the Lorac Pro. I get so many people asking me, you know, would you choose Lorac Pro compared to XYZ? And really, this does have the best variety um, for giving you basic eyeshadows. You've got a row of mattes, a row of shimmers. You've probably seen this lots and lots of times, but you can get a ton of different looks out of this. Granted, you're not getting a ton of like wild and crazy colors, but I feel like for overall neutrals and a few kind of fun pops, color variety is good. Texture is amazing. And I just could see this palette completely filling the holes in your collection. If you're missing that amazing matte black, it's in here. If you're missing you know, a gorgeous shimmery taupe, it's here. If you're missing a perfect matte cream shade, you know, it's in here. And I think it will continue to be popular year after year after year just because of how important the shades in here are and how user-friendly it is. You know, it's a compact palette. It's very easy to take with you to travel. And when I'm thinking about what the most people would get the most good out of, this one comes out on top. I also have to mention a certain palette. Just from a personal standpoint, I feel like all the looks I do with this palette, I really like. There are a lot of times when I do looks here at my makeup mirror and I'm thinking, hmm, it's okay, may not try that again or not my favorite because I'm always trying different things. But with this palette, I almost consistently get something I like out of it and it's the Lorac Unzipped. So yes, two Lorac palettes winning this year, but this is home to so many beautiful shade. This is giving you like a really warm neutral look with a lot of pretty bronzes, some burgundies, um, a little rose gold in this palette. I think um, if you're getting started with eyeshadows, you start with the Lorac Pro and if you want an even more expanded selection of neutrals, you grab the unzipped. That's my take on that. A large drugstore palette, and by the way, when I'm thinking large versus small, I'm thinking like 10 or more shades. So this one from the drugstore has 12 and it's the Sonia Kashuk Ion Neutral Shimmer. Um, I like the Ion Neutral Matte. I think it's a pretty darn good palette, but if you get a chance to feel um, the way these shimmery shadows feel, I think the texture is just to die for consistently throughout all of these shades. I think it's great to have mattes. You guys know I love my mattes, but this particular palette is so well done in these textures. For overall eyeshadows, so we're looking at eyeshadow quality, not a specific palette, but just across the board, what's the best from high end? My first favorite is Lorac. I feel like these shadows, and I'm holding this palette just as an example, but across the board from what I've tried, even some of their singles, different formats of the shadows. I feel like they all blend easily. They're very true to the color you would expect to get. So I've been super impressed with all that I've tried from Lorac throughout this year. Um, but I've also got to give a big shout out to the Balm. The Balm has really been a favorite of mine. Their shadows over the years, they've got some great different palettes. And now, um, just recently, they've come out with singles. And I'll expand on these soon. I know I haven't talked about these a whole lot yet, but this is a palette that they've put out that you can just fill with single shadows or you could fill a Z palette with their singles but they've taken like some of the shades out of their palettes that we know and love like Nude Tude and the different ones because I totally recognize them and they put them in full size singles and these shadows are impeccable quality as well. I feel like they're very similar to the softness of the Lorac shadows, so really nice quality. Um, there may be even some more unique shades um, that I've run across in the Balms palettes. Their matte palettes are great as well. I was kind of looking in my favorite palettes for things that I've really felt like I used the most over the past year, and I think those were the Lorac ones, but um, the Balm has undeniably great quality eyeshadows too. For favorite eyeshadows from the drugstore, one of these um, favorites that I'm gonna give has been a repeated winner, like one, two, three, four years now, and it is well Wet and wild. Um, for the price, I think it's really, really tough to beat. And I know Wet and Wild will come out with new collections here and there. Sometimes the new or limited edition things that they come out with aren't always like as fabulous quality as the things that are part of just the regular line that we always see. Things like Silent Treatment, the Comfort Zone. The pigmentation will blow your mind. I don't struggle to blend them out on my lids, in my crease, whatever. And the color variety is really pretty decent, so I've, I've just got to give credit where credit is due. I think Wet n Wild continues to have some of the best drugstore eyeshadows. <laughs> 
Grand Wet n Wild is really turning some heads this year. Ah, Wet n Wild. Takes me back to Spring Break 2003 in South Padre. The tequila was flowing and the women were, well, Perhaps we'll get to that later. But I want to share another favorite with you. If you're looking for um, one of the best values on single eyeshadows and every color in the rainbow, I've got to give a shout out to the Coastal Sense Hot Pots. I mean, the cost on these, like a dollar a piece or something, there's so many different shades. Here I've taken one of their Coastal Sense palettes and just filled it up with some of you them. You can put these little pans in any empty palette you have, but the textures are so nice. Um, really, really bold and pigmented. A vast array of colors, matte shimmer, you name it, anything you could want. You know, they've got all of this selection and the quality is just so good. Pencil liners now, um, talking about high end, a brand new favorite this year. Um, I, I just could not get this one out of my head because of how smoothly it applies, but it's still got the amazing staying power. And it's the Tarte Skinny Smolder Eyes. The one I'm showing you here is in Sunstone Bronze. Thank you, Kristen Game, for like reminding me that I even had this in my collection um, months and months ago. And when you use it, you're just in awe of how little pressure you have to apply to get full color and you can smudge this out if you want to, but it will set and not move. It's got a little smudge tip on there, really a waterproof product, can't beat it. From the drugstore, um, a new favorite this year, it's the Jordana 12 Hour Made to Last Pencils. Um, there's a really nice color variety in these. I mean, we're going beyond just brown and black, but you've got a pretty like electric blue. I love the plum called Purple Fix that I'm holding now. I've actually got a little bit of this in my look today. There's a pretty green too. I've got a blog post outlining all of these, but um, they're probably the least expensive drugstore liner that will go on and set to a completely budge-free state. For liquid liner, I just have a drugstore favorite this year, and it's the Milani Ultra Fine Liquid Eyeliner, specifically in the shade Black Vinyl. Um, I did a absolute waterproof test with these, and uh, unfortunately, not every liner in this line of Ultra Fines is waterproof like they say. Some will run at the drop of a hat, but this one is truly, truly, like, stays all day and beyond waterproof liner, jet black black. Um, it will give you a great precise line. You've got that little fine felt tip there. Glides on with full color. No need to like go back over it. It's not watery at all. This will easily execute your winged liner if you want it to. Just a total favorite. Um, no brainer. Didn't have to hardly think about it. This is great. Time for an Emily Awards game break. Anticipation from fans has reached a fever pitch. Every man, woman, and child is cheering on their favorite products. Even animals. Would you look at that little pooch. Emily? For cream or gel liners, again, I don't have a high-end favorite that I would really latched on to and loved this year, but I've got two drugstore favorites. Um, the first is from Essence. It's the gel liner in Midnight in Paris. This is black. This is a must-have. Everybody needs a black eyeliner, right? This goes on like butter uh, with, I love to use my Real Techniques Fine Liner Brush. It just goes on so easily, sets completely to where you cannot move it, and by far one of the cheapest gel liners on the market. So if you just need black, you cannot miss with but that. I also got to mention, for a great shade selection, the Makeup Geek Gel Liners. These, again, are very long-wearing, but for just those really unique colors, like this one, this is one of my favorites. It's called Fame, and it's like this gorgeous teal with a little bit of metallic stuff going on there. I think it's so, so beautiful, and there's that and a whole spectrum more from her line. Really affordably priced, right along the lines of what you pay at the drugstore, but just a great color range. Um, the new winners continue. Um, High-end mascara, I've run into something that I just love, and it's Too Faced's Better Than Sex Mascara. This is their new release that came out this year, and I tell you what, this is just lengthening, thickening, um, does not make them feel hard and brittle. I feel like it just extends them to the point where I'm like, what? It's not a super wet formula mascara, but I don't find that it's that dry either. It builds on itself nicely. I just really have no complaints. Whatever this is doing, it's making my lashes bigger and more lush than the other stuff that I've used in the past. And here's a look at the brush. It is an hourglass shape, but the reason why I like it is that it doesn't go too far in. 
in the center because sometimes when they, they dip too far in and become too skinny there in the middle, you can't reach all of your lashes with that. I could probably write a book on the things that I love about this. So I'll stop there and just tell you, I love this mascara. This is the small size, but I've got a big size waiting for me. For drugstore, I've got a new winner this year and it's the Essence I Love Extreme Crazy Volume Mascara. Um, this is just one of those that over the past year, you know, it grew on me and then I stopped using it for a while because I'm like, okay, I know what I think about that. I'm going to try some more things. And then I come back to it and yep, it's just as good as I remember. It's got this brush with a lot of short um, rubber bristles. And I might initially glance at that and think, eh, I don't know about that. But you know what? It really applies nicely. Kind of a dry formula mascara. It's great, great separation. Two coats, I think you'll be super satisfied with the great length that you have. Just the look of more lashes. I've raved about this in various videos here and there, but this really is a great mascara at a very low price. For false eyelashes, another new favorite this year, it's the Red Cherry number 43 threes. Love these lashes for a lot of reasons. I'm wearing them today as well. Um, let's just give you the highlights here. Great length. Not every lash on this band is the same length, which I think really allows them to blend into your natural lashes nicely. They're not too long from left to right. See how these really taper to a nice short length right here on this end. So you can't really see where they start or where they end right there in the corner of my eye. I mean, they are dramatic though. Look at that length, the thickness. I mean, this is your night out glam or doing an Emily Awards video, um, bold false lash, but I love Love it. Tyler's bunch tip back with you for a game break. Folks, they might look like fuzzy caterpillars on your bathroom counter. But these hairy strips from Red Cherry are known to be some of the most flattering on the eyes. Not that I would ever wear them. What? Hey. Right, be right behind me? <laughs> Who is responsible for this? Now my last category and it's favorite brow products for high end. Um, again, a new favorite this year, It Cosmetics and it's the Your Brows But Better Skinny Pencil. There is a brow power pencil out there. It's got a little thicker tip, um, but it's that universal one shade fits all kind of product. The idea with this universal color is that it can be lighter or darker depending on how much pressure you apply. So when I want it lighter in on this part of my brow, I just apply light pressure. When I want it deeper in here, I apply a little bit more. And this skinny tip lets me apply that pressure while keeping a natural look. It's got your product on one end and then a little brush on the other that you can go through your brows with, but this has just been great. Now a great, great drugstore option. This is a returning favorite. It's the e.l.f. Studio Eyebrow Kit. I love this because it gives you options. You know, if you just want to fill in your brows with a matte powder, you can do that. You've got a matte powder and then you've also got a tinted wax. This can be used on its own if you wanted to to fill in your brows or for ultimate staying power and hold holding the shape of your brows you put this on fill in your bare spots and then top it off with the powder I use the little brush that comes in here it's an angled brush and like a small shadow brush I just like that you can decide how it works best for you you know more of the wax less of the wax more of the powder less of it and you can just kind of build your own routine with it man do I love my eye products thank you guys so so much for watching part two of the Emily Awards. Well, part two of the Emily Awards is in the books. Join us next time for Lips. I'm Tyler Sponge Tip, and until next time, you stay glossy, beauty broadcasters.